Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. Something a little bit different today, but I think you'll enjoy it. I am reunited. A little reunion with the one and only Jim McD. Those guys don't know. We had a podcast for a very long time together. Uh, and then now... I got a new podcast, The Mama's Boys Podcast with Omar Isoff, and we got to sit down, chat with Jim McD. So here it is for you guys. If you want to <clears throat> start over. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, something a little bit different. My podcast, Omar Isoff, Mama's Boys Podcast. I got the opportunity to sit down with a longtime friend, the Jim McD. If you don't know, I had a podcast with him back in the day. So it was super cool to sit down with him. I hope you guys enjoy. And if you do enjoy, do me a big favor. Head over to iTunes. Head over to Spotify. Whatever platform you use. Be sure to subscribe. Give it a rating or review. We drop new podcasts every Tuesday and Friday. Brand new episodes. We have some really cool guests coming up. Jen Wiederstrom, my friend Hannah Eden, uh, Bryce Kerchek from Calgary Barbell. A bunch of really cool people lined up that are dropping within the next couple weeks. So head over to iTunes. Subscribe. A rating or review really, really helps. I would appreciate it. Enjoy, my friends. Bye. Yeah. What what size are you using? <laughs> what, uh, Nigel, what size? We're rookies. What yeah, size? We didn't look. We didn't look. The big size. Six and a half inches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about average? <laughs> no, I'm above average, baby. <laughs> oh, maybe in Canada, buddy. We're in America now. <laughs> in America, Canada's doing better than that. What, are you, doing, doing what better. are you guys doing? Wiener research? <laughs> yeah, man. You can see there was like an infographic about dick sizes it's across the world. Across the world. Who, who, who did the best? No, I, I didn't see this. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact. But Canada, Canada compared to America, Canada's doing better than America. Who's got sure. the biggest wing in America or in the world? Like <laughs> an, Amer- an African country, I think. No, come on, yeah, dude. It's, it's come on, real, dude. Oh, come on, yeah. Nigel. Like, come on, is. dude. It's 2018. That joke's old. All right, you got you got to do an incognito search to get the answer. To this <laughs> there you go. No, you know, not not just you know, like, dick products forever. I'll do I was any, anything that works. I'm down. To I'm gonna make you do it. So. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, welcome to Mama's Boys Podcast, the absolutely worst podcast in the entire world. <laughs> We're here with one of my good friends, one of the kindest souls in the world. Uh, reunite, uh, reunited, and feels so good. Feels situation, so good. Uh, Mr. Jim McD. We got to plug away first. Lead the way, buddy. Oh, hi. Let me do the endorsement. What's cracking, <laughs> guys? My name is Omar. I just want to quickly give a shout out to our sponsor, the sponsor, Kaizen Training. Who are those guys? I started, who are those handsome devils? Started it with. With myself, Silent Mike Barquan, we offer training programs for all your fitness needs. Whether your goal is to build muscle, lose fat, or get stronger, check out Kaizen Training. That's K-I-Z or Z-E-N training.com. Jim McD and I go uh, years back now, probably seven, six, and training partners, content creation partners, podcast partners, soon to be life partners. <laughs> it's great to have back. you on, Jim. Yeah, it's cool you came to Columbus, Thanks. buddy. It's really awesome to be here. <laughs> Yeah, you. Uh, I see you're trying to one up me on the checkered shirt game, and I think you may have yeah. won. Checkered shirt game strong. You know what I'm saying? It's maybe that's you. Just you know, I know you got some family now up in Canada. You yeah, just, what's you're it family up in Canada for sure. Yeah. First, first is starting with blue. And yeah. then it's going to go red and black. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm you know. going to know the words to O Canada, and, and I'm just going to wake up some morning, and I'm going to be able to sing that fucker and just <laughs> oh, know yeah. where it came from. What's yeah, the, that's how we indoctrinate called? you. What, this? Uh, Canadian Tuxedo or my way off? Oh, uh, Canadian Tuxedo is actually wearing denim, jeans, denim? Denim, denim everything. So jeans, jacket, and then shirt? if you have... Uh, I'm not sure about the shirt. I'm going to go with yes for the shirt. I've been in Canada <laughs> enough that I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, it's a real thing. Hey, Jim, let me ask you something, because you do have family in Canada. Do you notice a difference... When you go there to Halifax as opposed to, you know, Sacramento or and, and if so, what are some of the big differences? Uh, one huge difference between Sacramento and a lot of the rest of the world is food. OK. Yeah. Because we have everything available. Yeah. And and when you go to a, so like a Halifax, you're going to be able to get some stuff that we can't readily get or cheap. And then there's going to be plenty of stuff that you can't get. OK. Um, and then they have like. Uh, the first place I ever saw Dunkin' Donuts coffee in a, in a in a grocery store, like grounds you could buy, oh, yeah. was was the Atlantic Superstore in Halifax. So. That's amazing. Jim uh, is good at saving all my facts. <clears throat> He'll know the real ones. He can fact check the shit out of us. Yeah, just how bad I am. But I've read places, who knows how serious the places are that I read, which aren't. But Sacramento is like one of the most diverse cities it's in whatever to, list. It's supposed to be one of the most yeah. diverse cities yeah. in America. So we, yeah. like, but it's a little different than L.A. We're like, L.A., you go to downtown L.A., and it's like Chinese food, Indian food, Mediterranean food, whatever. In okay. Sacramento, we have our pockets, so you could probably yeah. cut that down. Like hoods. Yeah, hoods. Well, yeah. it's got to be hood. What you guys I just say hoods, like neighborhoods. Oh, okay. Neighbor. Yeah, neighborhoods. It's a little bit all over, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, if you want good Asian food, you go to South Sac. Right. Um, oh, my God, they're putting... 
as an aside, they're putting the best Mongolian hot pot place, like it's a chain, yeah. but they're putting one in South Sac. Interesting. I, I don't know if I've ever gone to South Sac. What I wish is, I think it was around when I was a kid, but I never went there, is like we had a little uh, Tokyo, basically, right? Yeah, Broadway. Yeah. yeah. But it's not anymore. I wish it was. No, it's not anymore. It's kind of like, yeah. Yeah, the, some of the, the buildings are still there, but they're just totally different businesses. Yeah, there's like one side. maybe business yeah, that stayed, but yeah. they're building that area up, but it's just going to be hipster shit. I would yeah. love a little Tokyo. Oh, man. Like uh, In LA, have you been, uh, Jim, to uh, Little Tokyo? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Like It just has a unique vibe. Yeah. Yeah, the that. stores that you go in there, there's yeah. that underground, the plaza. There are K-Town. Yeah. K-Town in LA is cool. But oh, yeah. Food. Mm-hmm. I love the idea. Like Toronto has that a lot. Um, and you've stopped over in Toronto on your way to Halifax or... Uh, yeah, a bunch of times. But we stayed in Halifax a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, Halifax, in, in Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. In Toronto. Yeah, Have you yeah. hung out there a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love Toronto. I uh, it's, oh, bro, because I'm there. Probably. Like, well, you want me Probably to explain, you want explain <laughs> what's going on in your subconscious? I'll do it. We, uh, well, we went to CN Tower. Yep. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I got freaked out because I don't like heights. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that, that glass yeah. floor. So wait, going up the elevator, you're fine, Jim? Yeah, because you know, it's looking down, that's my problem. Well, the elevator, you know, so for those that don't know, the CN Tower, it was previously the longest standing free structure, I believe, in the world, and now it's been surpassed. But uh, the elevator itself, when it goes up, you could just look outside and see completely out, and you're going up pretty fast. That, yeah, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. That to me, looking down through, yeah. It, so you look down, Jim, and what do you see? You're, well, top? you see your feet, and then you see that the the, uh, the Ripley's <laughs> Aquarium below you, oh, yeah. whatever yeah. happens to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we went to uh, um, we went to a baseball game. Yep. Yeah, we were talking cool. about doing that. We should have done it. We'll do it next time. Oh, it's all good. It's so weird that the hotel is inside the building. That's oh yeah, very cool. You can watch the you watch the game from your hotel room. Uh, yeah, yeah. Are those a little more expensive. Yeah, I oh, pretty much have to be. Yeah, I would. Jim's, there. Jim's balling. I'll okay, I'll I want to know what the side hustle is, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we actually we were in Airbnb. Yeah. Can I tell this story? I don't know. Please, if you can know. tell whatever you want, buddy. <clears throat> maybe we edit this. Maybe we don't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who'd you stab, Jim? <laughs> uh, no, no. What? Well, here's what happened. We we were staying there with my my son and daughter in law and my grandson, and uh, the toilet broke and it stayed broke almost oh. the whole time that we were there uh, we really had to 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 plan our our bathroom trips yeah 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 and it, and it, the weather was not perfect while we were there yeah it was windy it was not yeah. conducive rainy some of the time and you're like i got to go to starbucks and use the bathroom yeah, yeah. lobby like, why are you in the lobby all day we well, come back and it's like uh what's the code today it's like 50632 okay <laughs> yeah so you can use the bathroom at starbucks and then um we were looking for a plunger underneath the uh sink you know yeah we found let's let's just say oh. that the two gentlemen who lived there used an appliance that I had not seen left out before. Oh, a, a private time, a private yeah. Did they use the kitchen? Did they use sponsor Rogan? Well, why is it underneath the no, kitchen no, sink? No, not that. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about front door. We're talking about back door. Oh, so like the opposite of Joe Rogan's old sponsor, like c- like clearing the decks. Let's say. Hmm. Anal, anal suppository? An anal, anal douche thing. Like a, oh. Is that like a colonic type yeah, deal? Yeah, yeah. Like a I homemade just, one, the though? The thing is, I don't think that they were like chronically constipated. Would you call anything. it a butt vacuum? A butt, uh, <laughs> more, more of a, more of a, a butt fountain. <laughs> a fountain. Oh, so like a, a they intrusive need, they needed bidet? They clean anuses. A, a, a intrusive bidet. bidet. But, but all, intrusive all bidets butt. are kind of for your butt. Yeah. But this one's like going in? Going in, yeah. Like a pipe? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike's all excited. Mike was like like just chilling, and then Jim, you continue your like, story. I was confused. I was thinking, you know, first of all, I, my gross head went, you know, like, yeah, what is it? A uh, flashlight, and then maybe dildo-ish. No, no, this was this was just to clean the decks out. Interesting. Gotcha. That doesn't yeah. sound so bad. Like, I've heard that's super healthy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. That they you never heard that's health? I don't know that they were doing it for health reasons. Well, oh, what, so it's a toy. What? So it is a toy. So no, my head was in the right no, no, place. No, no, no. Oh. I think it was getting ready. I think it was a pre-gaming activity. So it was, Pre-game for sex, Mike. Like, oh. how are you not figuring this out? I like how Jim said, yeah, so two dudes are living there, and you're thinking to yourself, when he they're basically indicated dudes. it's a sex they're toy. Dudes. And Mike's like, what? So it's a flashlight? Like, they both bang the same flashlight? I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> like, it, I guess I ignored the two dude part and just thought, like, <laughs> What's weird that would be under the sink? And so I went dirty, and then I went clean, but it's getting clean to get dirty. Yeah. I'm with oh, it. I'm with it. Something yeah. like that. They were it. incredibly nice, and they were so nice. <laughs> the thing was there. Incredibly uh, clean. But, like, we could not let my grandson, you know, know that that was 
you, dare and play with it. Of course. Oh, oh. Not, that, not, <laughs> not, not that it would be badly influenced, but yeah, that yeah, was yeah. up somebody's yeah, dirt. Bum. But yeah, 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 just don't touch it. Uh, don't touch that, yeah. So anyway. t- uh, two uh, quick asides about Airbnb. The first is that a buddy they of ours, suck. Ryan, when he had a stay, I think it was in LA with Matt, when he visited you guys for oh. some work, they stayed at a place oh, and yeah. the guy was a, what, a painter? So, uh, what was no, it, Mike? No. So I, uh, yeah, so he went, uh, shout out to our boy Ryan. Uh, so he went and I think the guy emailed or messaged ahead say there's um like artistic adult stuff on the wall and he was thinking like whatever right like like naked girl artistically mm-hmm. yeah. he went in there and it's straight just like cock and like <laughs> like <laughs> pictures everywhere he sent me pictures and like the sp- uh, don't quote me don't quote Jim, me Jim, don't, an insane amount the, don't quote me like the spoons are like balls and like everything's oh, yeah. just like, like the pillows have dicks on them yeah, like he sent his photos to our group everything it's not yeah. like one picture yeah, of like a naked picture. shooter lady uh, which would be a very nice warning yeah, like you have kids your grandsons are you maybe don't want a ball yeah. picture right but that yeah, can be yeah. done artistically sure. but this is just dicks and balls <laughs> all over the entire yeah. it was one note <laughs> All throughout the one theme, dicks and balls. This isn't like Georgia O'Keeffe, who everything she painted looked like a, like the opening of a vagina, no, but it, wasn't the opening of a vagina. Yeah, but it wasn't you know even. I mean? No, I know actually I what you're referring to. Pictures. <laughs> there were there were straight. pictures too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, all of so it. This is photo like, realistic like photography. Yes. Yeah, half and half. Yeah, combination photo realism. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, that, that's yeah. that's a, and this yeah. was an Airbnb. It oh was, yeah, it was like downtown LA. Like, and I guess they warned them. I don't know. I don't like Airbnb anymore. Well, yeah, weird we've had and then other quick aside I say about Airbnb. I was staying one time with my brother at this place, and uh, shout out to the uh, uh, host, Dave, who probably had to deal with it after. <laughs> but there's just a few things that we weren't happy with, and my brother's a straight thug. And so what you, what, <laughs> we went to leave, like just some things he did not appreciate, and Dave wasn't being helpful. He just took, I forget what he did. He organized it so the toilet bowl, you know, you flip the top so it drains the water. Mm-hmm. And then he just took a massive shit in the toilet. <laughs> How old are you? Yeah, I was like 22. Uh, Don't uh, lie. Uh, Early twenties. It was early twenties. Upper shelf. Yeah. Upper yeah, deck. Yeah. Upper deck. Upper, deck. upper decker. Upper decker. Uh, I'm gonna switch. No, this is, it, is in the bowl. Yeah. Let's make it. Yeah. It's called okay, upper decker. Uh, okay. So CN Tower is really cool. Yeah. Yes. But have you been to the New World Trade? Uh no. Oh, that okay. is probably the best like touristy tour thing I've ever done in my life. So, so you the New World Trade Center. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, yeah one no. World Trade. I think it's called technically. Right, right next to the memorial, we have the newest, tallest building. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, no, I, I've been, I've not been in it. I've been. I was there it. with you. Yeah, yeah, around it. Yeah, yeah. We went to the more memorial, but we didn't go in the building. Right. And up. Yeah, yeah. So I went in the building and up. Uh, they set the tone so insanely. Uh, you're walking through a pretty long line. Mm-hmm. Uh, luckily for me, there's no line, but you're walking no. through like cues because you're silent mic yeah i said yo it's grim <laughs> uh no we we're actually uh my newest trick in Do you life know who i am <laughs> yeah my newest trick in life which is the dumbest trick ever but i just realized that like you can buy tickets to anything online why are there lines so yeah. like you go to disneyland yeah. and people are literally waiting an hour i'm like bink, bonk, bink. like i don't know why i waited in the line halfway then yeah. I, I clicked in my head like duh and so same thing there there's a half an hour line sure. to go up the tower i was like well I'll just buy it online so there's no line uh you're walking through and the whole all the walls are um they're, they're decorated so sometimes it kind of looks feels like a foundation like you're in the basement and sometimes there's screens and they have the construction workers talking about building the first world trade mm-hmm. like being interviewed and then they have People talking about this one and what it meant to them and feeling it because it's right next to the memorial. Mm-hmm. Sure. And so then you get in the elevator and all sides of the uh, elevator are screens also. And you start at the ground and there's nothing around you. You see nothing but water on one side. And as the elevator's going up whatever billion floors, mm-hmm. you see ti- a time lapse, a animated time lapse of history of New York being built around hmm. you. Oh, wow. That's awesome. It's fucking insane. So you see like, okay, like one little church over here and then it's like, wah, 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 mm-hmm. wah, and all these buildings are towering up above you. And then all of a sudden they disappear. The screen disappears. And then you see uh, real New York, uh, oh, what it wow. is now, right? Like a, Very a, cool. a mirror or a, excuse me, window. Yeah. Uh, wow. And it's just uh, like, it literally gives you chills hearing these construction workers obviously talk about the emotion of being born and raised in New York, the towers in 2001 and everything going on. Uh, it's insane. It's insane. But that's what I recommend all you uh, touristy people. <laughs> that's, CN was cool. That'd be really cool. It was cool. It was cool. So my, a bad Airbnb experience. Yeah, yeah. Sir. My worst one was actually in Halifax. We got there at really late. 
because when you're flying from California to Halifax, it takes 13, 14 hours. So yep. you never, you don't, you never get there at a decent time unless you're willing to fly overnight. And I don't like to do that because I can't sleep on planes very well. Yeah. yeah, same. Yeah. The time change, it just messes everything up. So we get to this house. It was a Victorian and it was listed as entire house. Yeah. And so we, my son had picked up the key and earlier in the day, and so we went, it's like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning by the time we finally get there. And we go into the house and it's kind of like creepy old Victorian for, for one. And so we're trying to figure out oh, where's, like, okay, where are the bedrooms and stuff? So <laughs> we opened the first, what looks like bedroom downstairs. And like all these eyes open up. It like it, it was like sex slave trade. It was like a, a den of possums or something, you know. I mean, it was all yeah. people. It was people. It's like stacked in there. What are you in a hostel? A uh, hostel? I think that they were foreign students. Oh, to be honest with you, I think they were foreign students. But why would they advertise, Jim, that it's an entire house? Then? This is a good question, oh, dude. Okay. We've had bad Airbnb. Yeah, we, it's yeah, like all of ours. I, I think yeah. that. I mean, the only thing I can think is that there was maybe a language barrier, and so like, yeah, it's a house. In the sense that it's not an apartment. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a full couple. house. It's not a duplex. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And so there was a there was an issue with that. So, so then you just kept, they found one or two empty rooms. We went up. We went upstairs with a room that w- was supposed to be the room that was in the ad that we thought was the only bedroom in the whole place. Gosh, I would have left. There was a refrigerator in the bedroom. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is weird. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we called Airbnb like right away and yeah. said, "Hey, we're getting the hell out of here because this is not how it was how it was yeah. advertised." But then at that point, they didn't have anything else to offer us, so we had to yeah, go like creepy. find a hotel. We stayed at the Lord Nelson for a couple of nights. <sighs> yeah, I think I would have left. We have a, a bad one in New York, which we've already told on air, so we'll save everybody. Everybody, I heard. I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. So we had Thank one. You, Jim. We, we had one in Toronto also, though that wasn't as bad. No. But like Airbnb, one, it's not even cheaper anymore, really. No, like if you start to get like, like New York, okay, New York, it's cheaper. I feel we Jim, saved a hundred bucks uh, a night. Yeah, uh, going and we got a sweet hotel compared to an Airbnb. Uh, so in Toronto, though, Omar books a dope house. It's and the overall experience was still an eight out of ten, but yeah. there's some weirdness. So it's a dope house right by the gym, mm-hmm. perfect, really cool feel to it, kind of modern, lofty feel, but big. There's a bunch of us in there. Uh, and I, forget, I don't even know the, the progress of things would happen, but basically same situation where it said whole house, yeah. yours, cool, uh-huh. person lives off site kind of deal. Where it was a lock, uh, uh, lock code box. lock. Yep. Yeah, we got uh-huh. in. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. And then like maybe she texts you or something. Yeah. And halfway we figured out that she's staying kind of in the basement. Yeah, so there's a trap door for the oh, main. Oh yeah, there's floor. a door and it says don't open it. That's what yeah. it was. <laughs> there's a door that says that. So it's a, a trap door on the main floor <laughs> by the they, kitchen. Yeah, yeah, and it just says like don't open or whatnot. Yeah. And so, so she has a separate open. entrance somewhere that we don't know about. Garage maybe yeah, underneath. We don't know. It says entire house. We don't know. She's staying in the basement. That's what we were up late the first night, just all socializing, all of us like one thirty. Yeah. And she said something like, "Hey, are you guys uh, in bed or just just something like something that yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. indicated she must have uh, either yeah, seen heard lights us. or heard us or yeah. something." Yeah. 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 Yeah, same thing. Like, look, it's not a big deal, but that's just weird. <laughs> like, yeah. and, and then you're expensive, and then like, nah. yeah, I should say, yeah. I I'm, should I'm, say, I'm your neighbor. <laughs> I, I mean, we've stayed in a couple of places that it was the like downstairs or the right. upstairs or whatever, right. and it's separate entrance. And it, but it's always said most Airbnbs yeah. are pretty clear. Like, I'm in this house, we share the kitchen or something, or even one in LA, which again was a pretty good experience, but it didn't say <clears> it was a duplex. And so the owners attached to you, and it's not uh, that big of a deal, but you just, I feel weird. It makes me feel yeah. not as comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I even like hotels. Like, a I, hotel's removed. You just come in, check out. And they're, they're here to like serve you. And, yeah. and like, you're, they're here to make you feel welcome. Where this other place, I'm feeling like, oh, I better not make them mad. Right. Like, yeah. That's not comfortable. Yeah. So hotels for me. So, yeah. So, man, I, all, our, our only other really bad one was um, in Oregon, and it was a place that was supposed to have this great view of the, like, bay and stuff. And it turns out that the house had a great view of the bay, but this extra part in the, the back, cottage. Co- the cottage was on the, there was, like, an open patio lanai kind of thing between it and the house. And you had to take your shoes off to walk on that, and yeah. there was no kitchen even though it said 
It said there was supposed to be a kitchen. It was like a microwave. It was access to the kitchen, <laughs> uh, their kitchen. She had to walk across, but only certain times of day. Weird. Just I not hate comfortable. That. I hate that. Yeah, you were supposed to be comfortable. We should have walked out like, like yeah. immediately. That's what we did in the New York one, obviously. Uh, yeah, we're actually fighting right now to get a <laughs> refund. I'm still in the process. Hashtag free Omar. <laughs> free Willie. Uh, uh, well, I was gonna say a lot of people do weird things, slightly different. I'm looking for a house. We talked about it a little yeah. bit, Jim, because Jim's uh, basically born and raised in Sacramento, even though he's not, but he is. Uh, <laughs> and so he knows Sacramento well, like me. And I'm talking about different places. So you'll look online and like a super like I'm going through a good website, and then some of the pictures I'm like, oh. Oh, the view. Oh, right. and then you go and like it's still nice, but you're like, well, that house is blocking the river oh, yeah. that I'm supposed to be seeing. Right. And right. actually, and because I know Sacramento, I already know some things. I'm like, the river is a mile away from this house. Why is there a picture of the river on this little pamphlet? Like, <laughs> yes, it's close to the river, but so is every major fucking city in America. <laughs> like, yeah. humans built around water. Pretty yeah. much, there are two rivers in Sacramento. Pretty much right. everything's close to the river in right. in the city proper. You Even know? outside, you go to the burbs. Like, the furthest you are is uh, twenty minutes from a river probably so yeah, yeah. you know like middle of full summer or something it still makes no sense and i'm like why like just why yeah like you it's just a little bit scammy yeah i think it's you know they're just trying to market yeah people just coming trying. from silicon valley trying to move to sacramento yeah that's a brutal commute i would never do that uh yeah but I, the, but the cost of living there is so bad so for bad. for particularly for housing it's just it's insane people can't afford to live there and work there what i didn't know is how that cost of housing in sacramento is pretty much comparative to all california besides Silicon Valley and San yeah. Francisco. But like yeah, yeah. LA's not that much different. Like obviously Hollywood and this and that, but like LA, <clears throat> LA, it's the same as Sacramento. Yeah, it is actually. It's a, it's more affordable than San Francisco by a good bit. Yeah. 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 And then San Diego is like <clears throat> obviously there's parts of San Diego that are yeah. following. Um, yeah. And then there's some parts that are sur- suburby too. Yeah, but the, yeah. Then again, with LA, you are living in LA, yeah. so that's probably why we we both don't like LA uh, at all. Uh, wait, back to Airbnb for a second. We yeah. stayed at Airbnb a couple a couple weeks ago uh, in the Hollywood Hills. Oh, yeah. okay, that sounds. Fun. It was a separate, completely separate building, like a uh, very windy road. Yeah, yeah. And then so we were. Um, they had a they had a stream. They built a freaking stream. On on the walk down to this place, it was like the the place we rented was the first turn off of the path, and then the house was down at the bottom of the path. So this is real Hollywood Hills. So like it was mansions. real, ho- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, real Hollywood Hills. So it was a big house, big yeah. nice house, and then they had this like um, uh, like you know in law apartment kind of thing, yeah, yeah. but it was fully outfitted. Oh, that's it really had, cool. It had like 14 foot ceilings and then they had done all the acoustic treatments so it didn't echo. Oh, dope. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Uh, See, that's that's, really that's, nice. that's, yeah. that's a good area. Of course. I yeah. had something like that uh, three years ago when we first, basically right before we started Kaizen training, you and I, Mike, where we came down uh, on that trip. So this would be what, 2015, but yeah. the same idea where a guy had a big house and then out back, as you said, kind of like the in-law yeah, uh, yeah, house cool or whatnot. House or yeah, and just fully decked out, yeah. completely independent. It was amazing. So, yeah, you can definitely have yeah. good experience. But I think once you start to crush numbers, like hotels, if you book in further enough advance, can beat it still. They can, and or if you do, um, you know, hotels tonight, if you're yeah, familiar yeah, yeah. with that, like yeah. sometimes you can get a good deal on that too. Um, yeah, and, and for us, like we're going to eat out anyways. Yeah. Like who's, I, I'm never actually yeah, cooking so- at Airbnb. Whereas we we almost never eat out at breakfast. Yeah, my wife is just like it's not it's not worth it to feed her in a restaurant because she can't eat enough to make it worthwhile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she make a portion. She's or whatever. a yogurt and granola breakfast person, Fair. and so you know, it's it's just it's just not worth it. But anyway, it was it was a pretty decent air, um, Uber down into Hollywood from yeah. there, and which is the way you want to do it because the traffic is awful. And that side of LA is a little different too. That's so like, LA yeah, I mean, if you can live over there, Brentwood and Melrose. And- I saw some actor at this newsstand, and I never, I can't remember his name, or I just, I, I don't know. Just know the face. Yeah, yeah. But like just everywhere. But, but they're everywhere. Yeah, they really are. Because there's so many actors you don't even think about. Like, uh, who's the guy that you just said is uh, narrating the West Side? Oh, uh, Ron Perlman. Yeah, oh, Ron Perlman. And so you yeah. guys say that, I'm like, ah, I don't know. And then I saw his face, I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I know him. That's so sick, you know? Like, yeah. and, and same thing, when you think like Hollywood, you think, oh, Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, you never think that guy. You yeah. could easily see that fool at, uh, hanging out at a coffee shop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And everything they say in LA is like 20 minutes away, but it's not, you know? Uh, that's a big difference between like out here, even maybe Toronto's a big city, but yeah. I'm sure some places in Canada, and then compared to like California, like, yeah, you're driving everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think, where where have I encountered the most traffic in, in Canada? 
Um, like dead, I mean, dead anywhere near the Bay Area is just actually yeah. literally the worst. LA is bad, but near San Francisco, <laughs> the grossest really, thing in the world. Mike's new thing. <laughs> <laughs> this one's this is like he's bringing oh. he's bringing uh, for this podcast he's bringing a whole new sound set effects. of uh, sound effects, yeah. bro. He's brought back, and I said this before off uh, camera, but I feel it's funny you're here, Jim. Mike's like uh, going retro, Mike. I with, feel like I'm 22 with the toque. again. Yeah, with the with the beanie, <laughs> with the shirt. You're like I'm ready to do max effort squats. What's toque, bro? A toque is a beanie. I know, but like, what's the man? Like, I don't know. I oh. just know it's what we call it. I don't know. I know. I like Australia has a bunch of things, like a jersey. I think it's a tank top. Like we don't say jersey unless vest. you're playing a sport. Wait, what's a vest? vest? What's a vest? Vest is a tank top. Yeah. yeah. Oh really? Yeah. You'd call it a vest? I don't know. We don't call a vest like that leather thing that we don't call fucking, it that. Oh, this is a house of learned doctors. Oh, a vest is a dumb guy thing. Jim, I want to talk about <laughs> <It's> an Australian. <laughs> I oh. want to talk about your beautiful, massive calves uh, for a second here, <laughs> because uh, I told you this, oh, this and that was the, the first battle. time. This is the battle. This is, is like captain, is the battle. This no. is the captain of calves, and this is Team No Calves. I'm a, I'm the I'm the Sundance kid right here, and you're Michael uh, Jordan, your Bush calves. Cassidy buddy. That's the is, Michael uh, Jordan of calves. Is uh, or you could be Captain Fantastic, and I could be the Browner Cowboy. Uh, I was gonna say, <laughs> you say the Brown, bro, bro. It's an Elton John album. <laughs> All right, okay? all right, fair. Is uh, come on now, get learned. I was gonna say. When I first visited uh, Super Training and I saw you were in shorts, I saw it like on camera or uh, whatever, but I think you probably honestly have, besides like a bodybuilder that, you know, no, even goes still, nuts, I'll even, put it up. I'll put yeah, it up. I'll put the jams up against I, I, think, I think you have uh, the biggest calves <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. And that's even bigger than Jeremy Hamilton, who oh, has never too. Yeah, who has is. never trained uh, calves either, and he just has diamonds. So I just want to know what's going on there and why are you not a foot dash, like a knee calf? down model? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, That's a good question. I yeah. don't know the answer to that question. That the other question is like totally genetics because yeah. my uh, one of my kids has exactly my calves. Yeah. The he's the more successful one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing way better. Yeah. That's it. Uh, it, it has, you know, he has exactly my calves. My younger son has like my leg length, but he's like six one. So yeah. He's got a thirty inch. In, 30 inch inseam and he's 6'1. So he's yeah. got short legs, long torso. Wow. And I thought he wasn't going to have the calves, but he's been working out a bunch lately. They're and strong. He, was, he showed me his calves the other day. He's like, oh no, like, like you don't have calves as big as my calves, but you have calves for somebody who doesn't have calves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Fair. The, the genes run strong yeah. in the McDonald family, is and what then, you're saying. Uh, <laughs> and then my grandsons both have them. Like, wow. The, both of them, like as babies, you can see them. <laughs> That's a blessing. Yeah. Blessed. So it's not a. It's not even about walking or yeah. working out. Yeah. Or it's just they're big. Hey, you. They, they look like at birth. They look like they have grapes under That's the skin. There yeah. behind the. Yeah, your shins. You would love. You would love to say the old adages of hard work, dedication, <laughs> keep at it, kids. And you're just like Jim. You're just like genetics, bro. Uh, it it is. It's genetics. It's crazy. I, I um, you know, uh, Ryan Connolly. Yeah, Lauren, yeah. Lauren Collins. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, I recently <laughs> had uh, somebody who's a cousin of mine contact me on Ancestry DNA and say, Hey, we're cousins, but I don't know how we're cousins. Uh, do you have a GED match number? And I, and I can run, uh, you know, I can run another analysis. So I said, I don't even know what you're talking about. So I looked it up and I got this, this GED match analysis thing. And, uh, you get a you get a number. It's a free website that you t- can take your raw genetic results from Ancestry okay. or Twenty Three and Me and load it in, and it gives you like a bunch of additional information. So it's like a second phase of this for free, b- based on a, a bunch of algorithm stuff. And like the craziest thing is like I'm like one percent um, Mesolithic Iranian. Very cool. So yeah, yeah, ancient, ancient yeah. super ancient yeah. DNA shit, yeah. Sumerian style. Yes. I love it. Yeah. So, you're you're a direct descendant of Gilgamesh, is what I'm. Uh, probably yeah, probably so. Yeah, and the first superhero, maybe. Yeah, the first Superman. He was the one third god. There you go. Yeah. So I put a picture of this this totally different breakout breakdown that I've ever seen before. It's like you know Eastern European hunter gatherer and Western European hunter gatherer and all this ancient yeah. DNA stuff up. And Ryan messaged me. He's like, "Dude, have you done uh, self decode?" 
And I was like, I don't even know what that is. So this website, the so you, take the, you take those same results and you put them into self decode and it's like 60 bucks and it gives you all these crazy health factors. Oh yeah. yeah See, yeah, that's yeah. useful. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. 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 Cause I don't know if it's 23 me. What's the other one? Uh, Ancestry. Ancestry DNA. There's a third or fourth. Yeah. Whatever. One too. My mom did one of them and, uh, some are just wrong, uh, but uh, and they try to like give you a little health thing. Yeah, like but some are wrong or like you're supposed to be blonde and like my mom's not blonde. Yeah. You know, like like or whatever. <sighs> some there is yeah. some of that stuff that's just and, like blatantly wrong. But then there's other yeah like Alzheimer's and blah 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 blah. Yeah, blah. yeah. And then so the 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 self decode one is does that stuff. That's cool. And I I yeah. So uh, I'm I'm worried now about Parkinson's. Oh, no. Okay. I'm worried about Alzheimer's. Yeah. Uh, it's a good thing I never started smoking because apparently I'm I'm that guy. Lung stuff? Uh, yeah, apparently I, I'm like, I would be, well, no, it's actually, it's, it's two factors. I would be likely to become a, addicted to smoking, oh, but I have protective factors for, against lung cancer. You see that oh. stuff for a reason? Like, uh, I just, uh, I obviously don't know no shit about science, but <laughs> I just push back with like nature versus nurture on that. Like, oh, I, yeah, I do yeah, think yeah. you're born with some addiction or non-addiction yeah, or whatever, yeah. but like, I think so much of it. It's like a plus 10% resistance. It's like, what does that maybe, even mean? Yeah, though? yeah. And then that yeah. starts to like go against the theory of like humans having control of what we do, which Maybe we are the Matrix. Maybe Elon is correct again. Where, where is Mike going here? With, I, I was gonna say, yeah, it's like plus ten extra resistance, but ultimately your like free will and a lot of other components yeah, make yeah, up yeah. the largest factor. Right, right, right. 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 The craziest one though was um, thanks, Neil. Multi factors, multi genetic factors for irritable bowel syndrome, which I yeah. totally have. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's completely descriptive in that regard. And there, the the GED match site had a thing that was a it was an eye color predictor that apparently works better on uh, 23andMe's results than Ancestry's. So mine was wrong because uh, my eyes are just just blue. Yeah. But from a genetic standpoint, they're not. Uh yeah, yeah, makes sense. Like I've I have what you could pass on or what yeah, they're supposed I have, to be. I have two or three genes for brown eyes. And I don't have brown eyes. Yeah, there was something like that because I read my mom's and I was like, well, that's just not. True. Yeah, and, <laughs> and apparently I'm um uh at a greater risk for gray hair, which I don't really have. Yeah, you, Did yours uh, tell you about like explosiveness? There, there was like something no, on my that's mom's. that's a different one. Yeah, yeah, whatever my mom said, something about like explosive athlete. And I was like, nope. And I was like, thanks, mom. Like, yeah. thanks, 20, man. Dad gave me something. And me has that. Yeah. Well, there's like a dashboard that's supposed to give you like an, an aggregation of all these particular factors into certain certain um, characteristics. And like mine looks like a fucking shit show. It's <laughs> awful. It's super awful. <laughs> I'm like... Dude, there's no good news here. Why would you turn me <laughs> yeah, why would I, yeah, why would you? It's like, do you? Why, why yeah. am I doing this? Yeah, and that it's almost like when people ask, like, would you want to know like when you die or how you die yeah, or yeah, both yeah. of them? It's like, or, you know or, what? It's like, you know what? I would rather not know any of it. Or just even things because I think whatever. Yeah, whatever one this one is, it like tells you a percentage that you might get Alzheimer's. So it's like, what if that bitch is like above eighty percent? I don't want to know. Like, yeah, no. I, I would almost rather just stop, start forgetting one day. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'd probably be less painful. Yeah, <laughs> like mentally painful. Yeah. 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 So anyway, I was hoping to to get some answer about the calf thing in there but i didn't see anything i did i did however find out that i am um that i'm a low responder to exercise yeah stuff like that yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm like well all right yeah stuff like that Uh, yeah which is interesting uh shout out to our boy jacob ross yeah he told me that uh luau the uh shout out to luau dang as well uh uh i was a big fan of his for one which is cool because i love basketball but two the he said that they did some diet stuff related to a blood or uh, mouth swab thing because uh-huh. uh, Luau I think was uh, pescatarian uh, okay. mostly maybe a little vegetarian I forgot don't quote me on any of this world or sorry Jacob sorry Luau <laughs> uh, but we then he him. yeah then some things like popped up they're like oh no he should probably eat some more of this or less of that uh, maybe it was like maybe it was the opposite maybe he was only eating chicken and then mm. it said like oh more fatty foods mm-hmm. don't quote me but something and then he yeah. adjusted and he's like yeah dude uh, and I saw him about a month afterwards, and I was like, "Yeah, I, I lost about five pounds." And he's already a lean dude. I was like, "Like a good five? He's like, "Dude, I feel great." Mm. I was like, "And I'm not one to really believe in that." Like maybe because people say like, "Oh, you're from Italy, you should just eat fish and wine," and you're you're just from Canada, you should just eat poutine and whatever. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Nobody should. Eat it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love I, it, but you know you should. Uh, Oh, you do like it? I do like it. I, I still didn't try it because it's mostly gravy, right? I don't even like gravy. It's gravy, cheese curds, and then fries. I don't even know fries. what a cheese curds is, dude. A uh, cheese curd is kind of like the throwaway of the cheese. Yeah. Right? Like curds and whey? Yeah. Set on our tongue? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> well, Mike, I feel like that hat might be too tight on your head, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you put on a little bit of muffins on our tongue and eat your curds and whey. Do you not have a childhood? Uh, uh, not in that sense oh. no with little miss tuffet no <laughs> i do not know this woman no 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 Miss. please do not associate you know me with her along, along came along came a spider 
Uh, that down beside her, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first rap song. <laughs> so those are the first rap songs. Jeez. NWA who? Oh, my God. Jim, uh, let me ask you a question here because you've uh, been on a podcast for quite some time. Mm. Uh, what is something – and you also listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. And so now this is new for me being – Approaching a, on, a launch. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's already launched, oh, man. You're oh, behind the times. You have two episodes. Time. By the time this is out, yeah, you're going to have uh, probably – is it one a week, Jim? Uh, no, that's a whole other story. I dropped the first two. I'm going to try to drop the next two at the same time, but it's a 10 episode season. So, gotcha. oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So like by the time that I leave here, I'm probably going to have seven episodes in the can. Don't. I only have yeah. three more to, to do for yeah, yeah. season one. Yeah. Chop them up and let them go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, my question was going to be, I'm just getting started. I'm also just listening to podcasts, getting into it. You from being in the game for uh, quite some time and you know running something successful, what what are the factors you look for in a podcast? Like when you just like, as if a creator, as a listener, as a creator first. Um, I, you know when, when I'm looking at how they're constructed. Yeah, um, I'm listening for most of the shows that I listen to are not not talk shows. They're most they're they're uh, informational kind of programs or. Yeah, for the most part, the, the ones that I listen to the most that I enjoy the most are more informational. So they're they're scripted yep. yeah, to a yeah, certain yeah, degree. Yeah, yeah. So like really good writing. And then on top of that, like really, really good production that understands how people listen to podcasts. Yeah. Uh, the trick of podcasts is that most people listen to them with earbuds. So you're kind of going right in their head. Yeah. So if you if you're well crafted, you get maybe a stronger response than you would from being exposed to the same information in a different format. Yeah, sure. even even reading it perhaps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's certainly certainly stronger than just watching it. Um Jimmy, you got that ASMR voice, I'm just saying, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's just like you listen to it. I think that is part of the success, honestly, just, of, of some podcasts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what I mean yeah. is, it's the it's the, the emotion, timber, it's the timber, yeah, yeah. the inflections, and a lot of those yeah, factors. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I let's just rip the can. I lift the lid off this for a second here because no. I, you know, starting my show, it has it is it's edited, and um, there's an, a, a setup intro, and then in the course of the conversation, I will, you know, course of the interview, I will cut in with like. Um, like your thoughts, my thoughts Post. on, yeah, on, yeah, that's on cool. something about this or a deeper, a piece of information that was, was missing that would help somebody understand like it that. better or that's whatever. Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a lot of work, but that stuff has to be scripted to a certain degree. Yeah. And, uh, basically I like, if it's particularly long, I script it, I speak it, I re-script it. And I respeak it. And yeah. so there's a little bit of variation most of the time, yeah. unless it's some unless it's information that's supposed to be, you know, if I'm providing numbers or yeah. something. Just like for that, the I people uh, I guess that are going to head that way from this podcast, give us uh, just a general breakdown of the idea of it because it is different than the podcast you and I were on. It's a little bit different than the vibe me and Omar have, where it is more talk show. We just wanna sit down with people we want to sit down with and talk. Yours has uh, much more direction and organization. <laughs> yeah, what what we lack, which is called direction in life. So skill. Uh, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> skill would be the second factor. Well, it's called the less than obvious podcast. And it's about when people make decisions that really only make sense to them at the time. Yeah. Everyone's around them, like going, "What? Like, why would you do that? That doesn't make any, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, th- that might be detrimental to you. Why are you doing that thing? Uh, kind of like the road not taken. Mm-hmm. Like, what happens when you take the road not taken? Yeah. That that whole thing, and then. Um, in the premise is built in that sometimes it turns out well and sometimes it turns out poorly. Sure. Am I going to find somebody who's going to tell me about something that didn't go well? It's going to be harder. I got you. For sure. I got you. I got like five of them. (laughs) I got five (laughs) in my head. I got got five forks in the road in my life, I fucked up way too many times. (laughs) Uh, And then... um, it's a it's a more directed conversation because I'm asking about I'm asking about the decision making process that led up to it and like what did you were you running purely on emotion or did you actually think through all the all the factors and then as you were going along was there any point that you um, regretted having made that decision 
whether it turned out well or not. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, sometimes you make a decision and things are rough. Like sometimes you make a decision for things to be rough for a period yeah, of time. Yeah, knowing it. And that's yeah. a, uh, there's all these gurus in this world right now uh, trying to be business guys and life coaches and all this. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Gary Vaynerchuk. One thing I do love that he says is he always talks about like uh, being willing to or choosing to eat shit for a while. Right. Like even right now, like <laughs> we could probably afford a better room for the three of us. There's three dudes staying in one hotel room. Like we could probably figure it out, but like we'd rather be a little bit more frugal, save our money to put it back to this podcast or put it back into our next venture or whatever. So we're eating shit in a sense that it's three grown men. Uh, <laughs> um, like this is awkward, dude, because I didn't tell you. Oh, you've you been staying no, next door? No, you uh, put me in charge of the budget. We are staying here for apparently three more days. We've run out of money for food. Yeah, that's what we're I mean. Done. Yeah, we're not that's eating. It. Yeah, we're not eating. Things nature or whatever. <laughs> things, uh, things be looking grim. Yeah, but uh, that's exactly what you're talking about. Like uh, choosing maybe a worse path. Yeah, uh, praying for the best, or maybe even for happiness. Like yeah. Worcester might be like taking uh, less money or taking whatever. Yeah, uh, but then doing it, it for something. We, bigger. Yeah, toward, toward the ultimate goal. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who are listening, I'm just going to mention the fact that this room has three guys and two beds. So anyway, yeah, yeah. 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 I, yeah used well, to, I used one to bed and a cot. <laughs> yeah. I used to sleep in the same bed as uh, Nigel, but now I'm sleeping on the floor. <laughs> I just I downgraded myself. Yeah, and two out of the three guys snore horribly. <laughs> oh, oh, I snore horribly. Oh, not good. Yeah, well, I, have, I, 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 have, <laughs> I like a, I probably like a whisper. Have, I probably have sleep apnea. Okay, bro, it's a very serious thing. Sorry. Wow. Sorry. Okay. I'm Sorry. yeah. Yeah. Sorry, touch yeah. the subject. Again. Wow, yeah, yeah. You okay. have a big tongue, I <laughs> Wow, wow. A, a Gene Simmons esque tongue. <laughs> was that, on the, the, was that yeah. on the recording when you said that? Yeah, yeah. I said because I was like joking around. I said, I don't know what it is. Yeah, you're like, I think I have a big dunk. Yeah, because all you guys are like, normally people that have sleep apnea are like way bigger than you. And I said, I think it's because I got a big tongue. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Like it, was, it was with the Tom. That's we hot. did a, That's a, a, a Tom Finn and a Tom Callis, and so they're just going off. So I'm just like, yeah, we can't. We couldn't even keep up. Yeah, I'm sure you couldn't. We yeah, we're pretty good. Pray for me tomorrow. Uh, oh, you're, you're done. You're them? done for. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, Yes, I agree too. Yeah, yeah you're done you're, for. Like I regret this, Jim. I want you to be uh, just perfectly honest with us because you've been listening to our podcast. And I actually have to say before I go on, I appreciate you in a way that I have never said when I was on. No, because when <laughs> I was on, when I was on, <laughs> when I was on uh, the Powercast uh, on the episode that I was when I was in person, mm. and it was uploaded to your channel. Mm-hmm. And like you know, I I shouted it out on my Facebook, like check it out. And a lot of my fans were like, "Oh, like this is like good." They enjoyed it, whatnot. But other people would say like, "This Omar guy is like uh, taking over the podcast, like just was dominating." Which is true, you know. I'm very talkative. I, I don't deny that. But like rather than being like, "Yeah, he could like be a bit much or whatnot," uh, I forget the way you phrased it, but you said only positive things about me when you definitely could not have because it, it, like your hardcore base had you know one opinion or or. A some of it had one opinion and you could have easily leaned into that. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. go on that side, but you actually, you didn't throw me in the dirt, buddy. You did the opposite. Cause so I appreciate that. <laughs> well, um, I just actually thinking back to that situation, it, uh, let's just say that, mm-hmm. that it wasn't, that particular interview wasn't being led very strongly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we, we were it, just fucking going nuts. And yeah. it, and it, it, it absolutely opened up for the opportunity for you to just go yeah, yeah. And yeah. so you went and that's yeah. i mean you're that's your style that's you yeah. <laughs> thank you jim that's you yeah, i yeah. appreciate so, that yeah, yeah i mean and i'm i'm completely down for the possibility that a, that a, particularly a podcast like that or maybe like this one whatever is going to be a little bit of an experiment yeah yeah, yeah. We're, we're open to that too right like obviously talking to our boys tom and tom are absolutely nuts then we had the wonderful miss uh john uh jen, jen thompson, thompson in here completely different completely vibe. different vibe even right. even you from jen are a different vibe a little more similar than the toms obviously but <laughs> yeah uh, and no so, one's yeah, like the thing. toms yeah <laughs> They really are well, one of a kind. But yeah, you get a, you don't know what you're opening up. Like we obviously do because I know you so well. But when you're inviting these different guests, right, yeah. you might get some opinions. You might not know them well enough in person. Like it is much of an experiment. Well, we, when we talked to Janae, we had no idea where oh, that yeah. was going to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, you 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 knew her. I never met her. Yeah, yeah. and that that was probably that was the, probably one of the best episodes ever. Yeah, I felt like a professional that day. Uh, yeah, I agree with that you. That was the day I stamped like, I am a podcaster. Because <laughs> I did like some research because a lot of the other guests we knew or or yeah. you could just quick Google like, oh, they squatted this or did this. Yeah. Easy research like that. I want to do real research on the topic itself uh, to be uh, hopefully understanding to uh-huh. her and the whole community and not be a dickhead that I can be yeah. uh, by just talking too soon, which happens a lot. Yeah, I think that we tried to be um, 
we tried to be sensitive to the to the to the situation too because it's and she's just been outed and all yeah. that stuff. I mean, that, that that sucks. Even if you even if you feel like that possibility is out there, yeah. Which you have to. How do you ignore that? Right. right? Uh, it still sucked. Yeah, and it was like the uh, topic of the year. It was because right? there's Kendall yeah. Jenner and there's all these different things yeah, going right, on. Right. Uh, Quite time. Yeah. yeah, there's so much going on. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm gonna. T- I've. It's like you just just. In that kind of my show is very con- yeah. very controlled in a lot of ways. Although, yeah. um, although it was my goal to make Michael Fahey cry today, and I did manage to do that. Game so on. Yeah. game on. Uh, I, I think it, it, if you're doing experimental things some of the time is good. Yeah. And it was. It, it had that feeling about it. It's like, well, Omar's going nuts. It's like, well, let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. Just yeah see I, thought it was, I actually thought it was good for my memory. Yeah. It was what three years ago or yeah. more. But yeah. my memory of it. Was I good. enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I mean that's 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 how it should work. And like, actually, uh, one of your episodes that I listened to that that actually that short one about about getting kicked out of New York. Oh yeah, the 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 vibe on that one was so completely authentic to the situation. Like that was that, that was like being in the room. Yeah. Because, Omar. because you guys you guys uh you don't you're not really doing it here, but you guys were completely talking over each other some of the yeah. time. But it was a but that conveyed the chaos yeah. of what you were feeling so much stronger than having a, a completely articulate yeah. thing. It's a different experience. It's a little bit of um um because it's not calculated, it's just how it's just yeah. how it was. Yeah. Like if somebody, if you calculated it, it would be performance art. Right. Yeah. Props to Omar for that because I was uh, not freaking out. I don't think I, even though we've talked about it a lot on media and past, we've talked about it on media and past of, of my anxiety issues. Yeah. Uh, I never like have a full freak out mode. Like I'm never in the corner crying, yeah. or, like throwing shit. But I was middle freaking out during that. Omar's like, we got to record this. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dude, Let's I don't want to record yeah. this. I want to get out of this Airbnb. He's like, no, this is great. Sit down. I was yeah. like, God damn. I want to get into because. Yeah. As an outsider trying to understand what your anxiety feels like, yeah. I'm like I wanted but to be there. That's really cool that it came through that way. Because it literally, I was trying to get out by one o'clock in moments. It was eleven, uh, and I was like, "Let's just go, dude. I don't want to be in here." And I was like, "Let's, like, let's record go. one." I was like, "Oh, well, great." <laughs> no, it was brilliant, and it goes back to what I said. It's it, being experimental. Some of the time is how things grow. Yeah, you can't all do the same thing the same way all the time. Sure, and expect to get anything out of it that's different than what you did before. Yeah, everyone it's, just uh, go back whatever ten seconds and listen to that again because that's like the most we see everywhere and we talk about the fitness industry and how real you are and just yeah. being yourself on things like everyone says like oh omar wears a bandana and does informational videos he's got eight hundred thousand subs <laughs> bandana <laughs> let me read a book oh let me talk some shit like yeah. that's literally what people do like no dude like omar experimented by doing cartwheels in a fucking soccer field oh, yeah. in 2010 yeah. like that's how we got there like yeah. it's yeah. so different they say with the podcast like jim came to me the first podcast we were on is like hey you want to do a podcast like bro i have no idea what a podcast is if you want me there i'm fucking there <laughs> we, get, we literally talk about eating shit we started in a closet smaller than my cot and i'm on a couch lounging on with my shoes off and we just started talking shit i didn't still don't think I listened to a podcast until probably two years later. When mm-hmm. I, I mean, I knew who Joe Rogan was, but I never knew what what that he such a big podcast. Mm-hmm. I listened to that. Yep. Even to this day, I probably listen to a podcast a month. And I think, in a way, other artists talk about this all the time. Not that I'm some artist, but they talk about like, oh, I don't listen to my genre of music because I don't want to be tainted. Yep. Uh, and that's how I kind of feel uh, agreeing 800 percent with what you do or saying. Because if I listen to a bunch of podcasts, maybe I'll pick up somebody's tendencies of an interview or tendencies not. I'd rather just be myself, and if you hate it, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and I, I know what you're saying. That's why I, I also reset this one to it's actually in self help under health instead of instead of the category that it was in before because I think that that being able to understand how other people make decisions will help you make decisions yourself or at least have more confidence about the decisions that you make and it's there is no but perfect formula yeah and yeah, i yeah. and i haven't done enough of them to be able to see even particularly patterns yet yeah i don't think there are uh, and it, maybe there are maybe there yeah. aren't but i i was super inspired by malcolm gladwell oh um, what work? Tipping point. Oh yeah, yeah. Tipping point. I'm Very cool. Huge fan of tipping point. I don't know what that is, but when you described your podcast, I was like, oh, he's talking about a tipping point. And yeah, yeah. and and uh, that's all I know. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of of his podcast. It's called Revisionist History. Okay, huge fan of that. So in my mind, Revisionist History, um, a little bit of how I built this. Yeah, yeah. I've listened to a couple of those. Those are really good. And um, a little bit of another one called The Hilarious Worlds of Depression, which is 
uh, comedians talking about depression. Interesting. Uh, there's a lot of depression in of the comedy world. Um, the thing that thing is weird about that show, and I can't listen to it all the time, is that it's literally it's 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 written, it's punched in with narrative the same way that I'm trying to do it. Uh, but it's got a very clear three three act structure, which I'm not evolved enough to do yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but act two is always dark as fuck. And then it kind of turns so it goes like out. intro, yeah. dark, light yeah, at the yeah, end, yeah, like yeah, redemption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's an establishment of like what the person does, and and what their life has been like up to the point that they realize that they're de- they're depressed or they're they have a de- depressive disorder. And then the middle part is always about how the depressed. Depressive disorder have had affected their lives. The woman who does My Drunk Kitchen did an episode recently. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, is her my name Hannah? My mom's a big fan of her. Yeah. We talked yeah. about her, yeah, Hannah Hart. No. Yeah, my yeah. mom's a fan of her. Uh, and then the third act is kind of like what they've done to try to improve their situation. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And not everybody improves that much. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, they get things somewhat more under control, but maybe not. That maybe maybe they have don't have a particularly well adjusted life at the end, and uh, some of them are so dark in 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 the second act that the third there's not enough light in the third, third act to pull it out. Yeah. It's still a really really well produced because podcast. it's real. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, by by somebody who do, who uh, is a depressed person and uh, doesn't he didn't. I mean, it's incredibly well produced. I don't know what his background was. He maybe was on one other podcast before this. Yeah. Um, and maybe he has a team or who knows what. I, but, yeah. I, I, he does at least have a team. There's, I don't think anybody's doing it as, as complicated a show as like I'm doing yeah, yeah, yeah. all by themselves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I which agree. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing it all by myself. I, yeah. I need help. Yeah. yeah. That's what you've been looking at. Our category, whatever, citing culture. I'm looking around, I'm like, uh, this one's produced by NPR. This one's produced oh, yeah. by, like, okay. We're against the big dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What'd you say, big dog? <laughs> big dog. But we're ready. We're ready. Yeah, we're coming. Yeah. Jim, let me ask you this, man. What is, so your new venture is the less than obvious podcast. Right. For you, uh, what are the things are you focusing on now these days? Um, I'm doing some post production with um, some other podcasts. Yep. And are you throwing an uh, application email out there? Or no, <laughs> not yet. People to contact you? Um, people can contact me, and the, the stage that I'm at right now, if they want to work, if they want to have a really good podcast, and they want to have like a, a an upper level kind of podcast. If you're fucking actually in it, <laughs> yeah. If yeah, you're if yeah. you're in it, if it's not just like, oh, I need to have a podcast because yeah. I need to also have a YouTube channel and I need to have yeah, yeah, Instagram yeah. because I, I have to... ten thousand on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. But no, right. You want a podcast? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It, um, then then hit me up cool. and we can talk about it. And if if you're interested, I can tell you that it's not going to be free. Yeah. And what well, it's well, not going to be easy either. And it's not going to be easy <laughs> either. Shit's hard. Like <laughs> I I really want to talk to. Like, it's very common for people to offer launch services. And I almost kind of wish that I'd done that with somebody this time yeah, myself yeah. because I'm doing it so much myself. I had a, I have a friend who was going to help me out and, like, got hung up. And so I'm going to have his help it's just a little later than my launch. Um, but with, the, with launch services, you're basically just, like, you're just doing a certain program stuff with them. You yeah. you help set up their feed with with a host, and you get them on all the platforms, yeah, equipment and, list, yeah, or something. Yeah, you may help them with with you know some graphic stuff and 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 that kind of thing. And, and initial like if you do a trailer for your for your podcast yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and there's a set amount associated with that. But I would really rather work with somebody who has a great idea for a podcast and help them develop it and figure out how to market it. And how, you know, what does it look like? What does it sound like? That's yeah. what I just went through with mine. Like my, my podcast has music in it. I yeah. find the music that works. That's cool. You know, yeah, and yeah, real you, production. Yeah. yeah real yeah. production. I want to, I want to do like really high quality cool. stuff. And uh, like, I don't know if the market is there, yeah. but, it, but, I feel like we're a place with podcasting where, unless you have um, a you have gifted personalities, you have to have uh, really high level production. I've heard you know it's a common thing like we talk <clears throat> about people just trying to emulate what they see or copy mm-hmm. other things, and there's so many podcasts popping up right now. Uh, and I've listened to some like what what was that? Yeah, like not again. Like I'm some podcast god. I'm like what like what. 
<clears throat> what were you even thinking going in? <laughs> like, right. What was was there any process of, yeah. of, of thought? Like me and Omar passed back ideas. Like, hey, I like how this guy kind of does it. I like, oh, with this guest, let's kind of talk, touch on this. Let's yeah. go this route. Just yeah. some kind of prep. And then Omar's insanely gifted uh, uh, personality, like you just said, and I can feed off that. So we're okay there, and we can play around with things. But you I agree lot, with you. You have a lot of experience too. That too. The I've reality. done it a little while. Uh, yeah, a hundred whatever episodes. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know when I'm bad. I know when I'm good. But you're right. You can't just show up and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna talk." And people are gonna listen. <laughs> you're gonna learn something today. Are you gonna listen today? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the thing. I, I think that we're past the point that that's that that works. Yeah, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> we did it in a closet for a little while. And yeah. we, we hit the right <laughs> moment because we were just talking today, listening. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, moment was a thing. Yeah, the yeah, was a thing. Being there, yeah, being. At the right place at the right time. 100%, which is everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's my YouTube. That's my Instagram. I'm sure you give some of your YouTube credit that right place, right time. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, if people wanted to contact me, they can do that. Um, You know, Instagram, email, Instagram. Yeah. They can email me at um, (laughs) Jim at the Jim McD.com. The Jim McD. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim, thanks for hanging out, buddy. We're going to go grab some food. Jim, uh, thank you so much for being on. Yeah, Great to see you his, again, man. Check out his podcast. I highly recommend it. The Jim Less a, Than Obvious Jim podcast. Jim as a human, uh, yeah. even though I haven't heard the podcast, because I recommend him as a human, I know the podcast will be good. <laughs> we would like you guys to check out mamasboyspodcast.com. If you're interested in some merch, we got a Patreon coming, so maybe it's linked, maybe it's not. We don't know where we stand with that. Check we it appreciate out in you the either description. Way. Appreciate all you guys. Make sure to leave us a rating and review on iTunes, and we're out. We're out. We're out in a bit, mate. <laughs> Go get your vest on, we out. <laughs>